Zurück zum Endspurt. Wir kommen jetzt zu Andra Frick. Die Famosen haben hier ein Studio mitgebracht und wir erleben jetzt eine Live-Produktion. Viel Spaß. Thank you very much. Uh, should we speak English or German? English, okay, that's enough. One is enough. Uh, thank you very much. We are Brandt uh, We are happy you uh, came here. And um, yes, I mean, we try to give you a little impression of how we work with this program that we've been using for years and years. And uh, maybe first uh, we thought we'd just show you something we just did, uh, go just into a few elements and later we um, show you a bit how we record something. Of course our studio looks a little bit different than this and we just brought like two or three uh, exemplary elements that we like to use. Um, yeah, also, I don't know, I think maybe probably not everyone here is doing music production or uh, making music, I don't know. I'm a bit unsure like how much it should be for experts, maybe a medium, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, so here we have an open file of um, Ableton of a remix we just did for Fink, who's in English like singer and songwriter, I would say. So for those who don't know, in Ableton you often start in this clip mode, which is very different to other programs. Um, usually when I click on this, you would see a normal arrangement view that's just music in time. You set up a time hex, of course, from um, left to right. And here it's different because you have these clips and each one of those little clips, I don't know exactly how each one sounds, but here you would have a clip, you see a longer recording uh, below and you see a little loop that we just took. And so each of these clips can have a different length and you can totally shift them around. And uh, for example, uh, it's always interesting to see what happens when some of these loops played together have a different length of time, so they keep on uh, shifting against each other. I just randomly uh, press on a scene, I don't know what comes out or if anything comes out. Um, shall I, do I need to tell him the... Sorry, maybe I should tell him which sound card he uses. Um, mm -hmm. Indeed. Soundflower, is it that? Is not on. Oh, sorry, Soundflower. Uh, still not on. Mm -hmm. Not on. That's very German. Okay. I guess I need to close this again. More to. <coughs> Turn it a bit low, we don't know what's coming on. Okay, here, that was apparently we started with some beat. You see, there's a hi hat here. That's something that Daniel, he usually plays the drums, uh, played. So you can see below, there's, that was some recording. Um, So we, most of what we record are, is just audio, so microphones or line-ins, so from synthesizers. Um, which is maybe why we are not the most tricky Ableton producers, we, uh, because we play a bit more than we produce, I guess. Uh, but um, this program is really special about just how the things come together. I will just show some elements. Okay, here we had a hi-hat. You have, of course, basic stuff like an EQ. Uh, well, most people know EQs, but without the EQ, it would sound like this. Ah, no, sorry. This is the... And, okay, it's maybe not so interesting. Another element. Okay, that's a kick drum. It looks like, actually, yeah, there's 
some people may know there's this interface called push which we didn't bring now but it's uh, really the, like the first real really good um, interface from Ableton themselves to play things and it's actually really intuitive because you just um, click on a clip you have or on an instrument and then you can instantly use it as a keyboard you can assign it to any element this looks like we quantized it afterwards uh, because it's really on the well, it's a mechanical timing. Maybe it was also just clicked with the mouse. I don't know. Next element. Okay. Well, this is also just a kick drum. I think these <laughs> elements are really basic. So I guess what we were doing here, we got some uh, uh, remix stems from Fink, the artist, and we listened to the song and thought, this element, we can use it. It's uh, nice to use. And these others, we just muted. So we used, I think, only the voice in the end. Hello? So yeah, I think in this case it was actually uh, this beat which we were just hearing uh, was a beat we made on a totally different session okay, already before we decided to make a remix or we had to make a remix so we already had some kind of track going on there and the cool thing about Ableton is that if you have a project and you think maybe that fits together with something completely different you can just load in all the uh, clips or directly the whole project and it works in the same tempo like the other stuff so this, uh, this one, this beat he was just playing we already yeah, wanted to make a different track with it, some other elements and then we thought, oh, that could maybe work with the stems we have from Fink and then we just merged it together and suddenly there was something happening. This is why our clip, clip page looks this, this kind of messed up because it's all clips that belong to really different sources. I think the blue one we recorded in 2007. Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, sometimes it's also just a beat, something you can start to play on, something which is like a click, uh, which is nicer to hear than a click, uh, so things could really change. And um, what's great about this, just taking elements of other songs, uh, I mean, we totally confess that we recycle each other, but I think just in the elements and not so much in the result, but basically it can create great chaos. I mean, making music is always, um, for us, yeah, always about finding something that you haven't heard or haven't done exactly that way. So you feel like, oh, I'm liking it. I haven't done it before, basically. And uh, yeah, so it's it's of course. I think what we do is we provoke um, hazards or we provoke coincidences or accidents and all. And then it's more about recognizing it together when we think it's great and usable. Maybe um, I mean often this clip view can look actually much more chaotic. I think here, because this song by Fink has a great, um, um, it has it has a pretty great um, development, and it's not there's not really like a verse and chorus. It's more like it's similar harmonies, but it's it always goes a bit different. So we definitely wanted to keep that. And uh, I think here in the guitars, there were some guitars from the original. I show them and turn off the effects because we made them into something different. So the guitars, it's these three things. I don't know what they were originally. Let's go. Well, this one, it sounds like this. Maybe different mics. Oh no, that's Ebo guitars. So it's composed of different sounds. And uh, so there's just some effects, some overdrive, so some light distortion, an audio filter that emphasizes on some frequencies and a bit of delay. So now it sounded more like a, um, and on the auto filter, uh, you have a, I think Daniel made that with a controller, probably with a push. There's some filter curves that make the sound change. So what before sounded like a guitar, then it sounded, sounds like this. Yeah. 
This was the song before. Okay, let's quickly, before we just show you a bit of the result, uh, go into some other elements. I think now, recently, we used a lot, what's that drum machine called? Machine drum. Jan does it a lot and it creates pretty amazing results. And what we, when we started making music together, I mean, I had, I learned this when we met, they were using that program and I learned it through that. And in the beginning we made much more uh, simple, much more small loops. And with the time going on and becoming a band and playing together, it became more like, um, yeah, leaving really long takes or, yeah, just get, accepting more that whole jam element. I think here in the drum machine we have some really pretty long takes. Let me look where they are. Um, Skelton? Oh yeah. Okay, let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, that's also, can you turn it a bit louder? same machine. Um, the thing is for us it's always important um, and you can achieve it in many different ways that there's some dynamics in the elements because it just makes things breathe and even though these are maybe rhythm loops um, with I mean actually in, with whatever device you are using whether you just play it like that whether you put some effects that make it like that or whether you do it afterwards it's for us it's always important to have something going on in the sounds, that even though it's a loop, like basically every little sound is a little bit different. I hope you could hear that. Um, and yes, actually we are, we started with a lot of, or mainly acoustic things, but with the time we also got some really nice synthesizers and things, so it's a lot diversified in what we use. Um, maybe for Impression, I just show a bit how it sounds together, no? or um, from the start, or yeah, maybe a bit in the middle, where do the vocals start, or just a little impression, it's not really mixed, it's, uh, I mean, it's not mastered at least. Mm.
as you can see, there's like two tracks with really tiny loops, like super tiny one or two bar loops, and and there's some bigger loops. The blue piano take is is a big long loop, like I think it's maybe it might be a two minute loop or something. But most of the takes are actually like really long audio takes that are edited, and that's actually the best thing about Ableton that loops and really long material goes goes like along so easily. Maybe uh, just show a little bit in the end, um, because I think there then there comes all the real drums from Daniel. I think. Uh, and also some drum track from the original rock song uh, mixed with Daniel's voice. Okay, I just saw, saw the sub bass here, uh, it's not installed, but we hear it without sub bass, so it doesn't matter. Um, or maybe a bit more. serves as an impression. I think you can maybe hear it in the song that there's a lot of chaos in it, so it's like provoked chaos and all of this chaos we choose and if it or shift around until we think it's good. And uh, yeah, maybe we should go on and um, just try show some live action how it can work to just start something. Yeah, okay, we open another song. So another thing what we use very often in general is to combine kind of electronic stuff with real stuff and for example here's a little setup with an electronic Nord pad which is a great drum synthesizer. We just cut it recently. So and then what we also have in the studio is that this is included inside the drum set. And then we have now we only have this piece of cardboard which is on the microphone. And then we actually record everything at the same time and then it kind of give, feels much more natural and we don't have that uh, thing that we program half of it and then play the other half or something. It's always in, in one go and here we have a track which we were just working on so we can show you the uh, workflow. Okay, now we have to prepare the recording quickly. And yeah, we just recently got this push controller and it's actually quite nice also for recording because there you have the whole setup kind of on this controller. You can also just record with it and then another great thing after the recording, so now we're just going to record some loop, but if we have all the loops in one, then we, we kind of create different lines of loops. Yeah? So we combine different loops and then make uh, put them all in this uh, lines and then it, then you can play press play on that left side where it says master and then you hear actually what's combined together and so this is kind of a nice thing called pre-arrangement and on the push controller you actually see visually uh, with the lights where are those clips and everything so you can completely detach from the computer and just go from the feeling into kind of a pre-arrangement and record that and then later in the arrangement sorry in the arrangement uh, later you can um, do the like kind of deta detailed work, but first it's just a great tool for just go by the feelings and completely not look at screens because it's not so nice to always look at screens. Okay, so.
Okay, what Paul is trying to do here is to arrange two recording buses. Get set up, Paul. Thank you. And I just put them together in one group because it's um, it's uh, all the tracks which we are going to record or all the clips actually they belong together like time based. They should be always started together. And. Um, So you can, if, if they are in one group, you can just uh, select the scene to record and... Actually, it's not recording yet. So it's be monitoring. So now Denham is doing the, is going to do the trick for you and playing the Nord drums, which I can't hear. Which is the Nord drums together with the card box, cardboard box. desk in the studio. This worked out perfectly, we just only recorded uh, the half of what we actually wanted to record, the one track is empty. So this is not a multi-track recording, I'm sorry, it's just one track. It's the box, which is even less than the half, so let's do it again. see is that we usually record way too much for a song and uh, much less 
ends up. Signals, we can listen to what it sounds like. Usually, we'll maybe put a bit more effort into the uh, putting the mic right. Okay, one has been only on one side, so it's kind of weird. How does it sound? Actually, we can't really hear it for us. It's all just a big mess of bass. <laughs> so that's the Nord drums, right? And here we have the actual sound. Of course, everything can be shown quite easily with a loop. For example, um, I mean, a very standard trick, of course, in Ableton, for, if we would see how it sounded like in a really mechanic ways, of course, quanti quantizing, you can tell them, okay, now play it as if a machine had played it like that. I quickly do that. Only because he wasn't able to hear himself properly. And basically what we just tried to do was a take, which is like sounding like one instrument, but it's actually Set, uh, put together by different sources or different stuff and you, you could see him playing the, the electronic drums and the, the hardware <laughs> drums and what I did here on the mixer is I put some effects inside as, um, as he played so we were trying to create together a more lively take or a more lively loop. separate elements, for example, and create a loop in each of them that's different. So we could see what happens. We take the first one, I randomly go into some part that looks as if there's some action. For example, here, I tell it it's a loop. And now I tell them, okay, that's one bar. Let's say, one. why not one bar and, for example, uh, one bar, one quarter note, and a sixteenth note or so. And, well, no, something like that. Um, and to the other one, that's really random now, we tell him, okay, make another loop. And it's, um, for example, rather short. Let's also give him something a bit, let's say it's three, three quarter notes. Okay, so. As you can see in these files, before there was just what there was recorded and through the loops, uh, you suddenly, well, it just gets copied on and on. So we can see what that sounds like.
maybe choose maybe a loop where it's even more evident. Okay, the second is, for example, it's funny to see what happens if they are almost the same, but not exactly. Now the second one, I leave it, oh, it doesn't work. Uh, this below one has uh, three quarter notes and the one before three quarter note and a sixteen note. We can hear some really simple shifting. Uh, so that's a very nice technique. I mean, it's as you see, uh, this follows Usually we would try around, okay, what can be interesting and spend more time on it, but uh, this, um, what's really nice in this software is just, you can create some chaos, press play and see, okay, what does it to me? Um, so then it's all about judging it or deciding, do you want that, do you not want that? Um, but especially for not keeping uh, doing the same thing, it's just the best way to create a big mess and then look through it. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe the effects stuff you can show a bit because we work a lot with effects through the aux channels of the of the mixer. So there we have an even type. Is it the uh, delay or? It's a reverb device, and uh, I can show it. And <laughs> and basically we we uh, always like to have a mixing desk in the middle of the setup, whether it's a studio setup or a live setup, because it's just really great to for the overview of things, because in there you get lost in details sometimes, and on the mixer you always, I always feel like I, as I really have an overview of many signals and stuff going on, and I don't really know what to tell you about effects now, but um, just make some. But um, if you have a, if you don't want to, one golden tip maybe, if you don't want to sound like Ableton, don't use the Ableton reverb. <laughs> so. This is the, the other reverb, and actually on my desk I have all the channels can send it to the reverb, so I can glue all the signals together with the reverb. For example, if you put the same kind of reverb on the, on the box, then on the Nordrons, they will sound like if it's like in one setting. And uh, same here. So if you have one proper reverb device on your desk, you are fine.
Hallo? <lacht> ähm, ja, also ich muss erstmal sagen, ich fand das jetzt ja, cool, was ihr gemacht habt. Es kam jetzt ein bisschen so, ich war schon ein bisschen durcheinander rüber, aber das ist halt, ich kenne das selber, weil ich auch Musik mache, das ist halt so die typische Studiosituation manchmal. Also man macht mal da ein bisschen, mal da ein bisschen. Und ähm, ja, also ich habe auch über was äh, mitbekommen. Und meine Frage ist, ähm, wenn ihr jetzt spielt, äh, was ja eher öfters in Clubs ist, nehme ich an, oder in ja, Clubs, ähm, wie, äh, das ist jetzt schon eine spezielle Frage, spielt ihr dann in Mono oder ist das Stereo, also wie, wie, wie ihr rausgeht? Weil wenn ich jetzt zum Beispiel Musik produziere, ich mache eher so Techno-Musik und ähm, so eine Clubanlage sind ja meistens eher Mono ausgelegt, damit es einfach mehr rumst, so. Wie, wie ist das bei euch? Ähm, wir waren früher immer Stereo und, und haben äh, mittlerweile einen Tonmann dabei, weil wir mit echten Drums spielen, also mit einem Schlagzeug und dann noch acht Kanälen elektronisch die dann vom FOH mal zusammengemischt werden. Ne, es sind 16 Kanäle, die gemischt werden zu einer Stereosumme dann natürlich, ja, aber die geben wir nicht raus. Wir geben einzelne Kanäle raus. Mono ist aber auch geil. Ja, Mono kann auch absolut super sein. Ich glaube, deine Frage beantwortet eher, dass wir eigentlich mittlerweile gar nicht mehr viel in Clubs spielen, weil eigentlich unser Setup in Clubs meistens gar nicht passt. In Clubs legen wir manchmal eher auf. Und am Anfang haben wir, hatten wir ein bisschen anderes Setup, da hatten wir halt gar keine Mikros, sondern Daniel hat halt äh, nur Drumpads gespielt, wo halt alle möglichen selbst offenen Klänge ausgelöst werden auf den Pads und da haben wir uns noch selber gemischt auf der Bühne, quasi auch mit so einem Mischer und seitdem wir halt echte Drums haben und noch mehr zusätzliche Instrumente, geht das halt so nicht mehr. Das heißt, wir brauchen jemanden mit uns, haben wir zum Glück jemanden sehr guten, der das dann halt von gegenüber mischt. Und wir spielen halt mehr eigentlich, eigentlich fast alles außer Clubs. Also irgendwie Festivals oder einfach Konzerthallen. Manchmal sitzen die Leute, meistens nicht. Und ähm, das hat sich ziemlich geändert. Und es ist schon so, dass so unser erstes Setup war eigentlich... Das Schöne war natürlich, es war super easy aufzubauen und ganz schnell. Aber irgendwie mit der Zeit, weil wir halt auch, glaube ich, stilistisch halt ein bisschen weg sind von dem Techno, jedenfalls klanglich irgendwie von Techno und mit echten Drums und viel mehr das ist eigentlich, am Anfang hatten wir oft noch so normale Techno Geschwindigkeiten und jetzt ist es eher so viel zu schnell für Techno, viel zu langsam manchmal auch genau richtig das, das hat dadurch bei uns so ein bisschen den Kontext verändert, aber ja, Mono, eigentlich kann man gegen Mono gar nichts sagen, solange es halt musikalisch Sinn macht und wir mögen aber eigentlich ein immer breiteres Stereo-Bild mit der Zeit weil es einfach schön ist und hat, oh sorry, I'm actually speaking German, äh, uh, English, uh, German, <lacht> um, uh, yeah, that's some Babylonian language confusion going on in my head, I'm really sorry, <lacht> and um, yeah, so I think for any technical thing, like how you work, uh, it sounds maybe like the most stupid wisdom ever, but it is so true that if something you have, if it is a really cheap, thing or instrument serves you to express what you want, then it's the right one. And um, yeah, nothing to say against mono, but for us it's just um, because our music has many elements and uh, it has often mostly that techno vibe, but also technically if you would have them all mono it wouldn't work. It's, it would just become one big sausage and we need, need all the diff possible different differentiation. Uh, to make it sound broad and to make make it sound uh, transparent. And I wouldn't really make it dependent on, on where you plan to play, because you're playing, if you want to play, you want to play in all, all different venues, and it's every, each and every venue is kind of different, and if you do a musical decision, I, I mean, if you're going mono or stereo, it's basically a musical thing, in my opinion, because you you're losing a lot of stuff you're losing a lot of, you know, the width of the thing and some effects you can't do. So, all the venues are super different. Usually they have two speakers, but you're right, the sound-wise sound it might be sometimes better to go in mono to make every corner and every place in the club sound the same, but all the clubs are different, so don't, don't, don't think too much about this. Situation, just decide if your music needs to be mono or stereo, that's it.
Hi, my name is Carlos. Uh, I've been listening into your band for, for a while. And I've been, I want to ask you guys, how do you um, choose the featured singers for your different tracks? From a point of view, they are really characteristic, sometimes melody-wise, and the color of the vocals are really, like, in some way for me, kind of way different and strange in, in many ways, too. What, is, what attracts you as a band when you want to do not only instrumental music uh, for us a vocalist? Uh, well, I think in general for us it was interesting to work with people who are willing to use their voice also as an instrument and not really... I mean, that was the last album, so now we're actually working on something completely different. It doesn't matter anymore, but... Uh, for that, uh, yeah, we wanted to make it uh, that it's not so much about making an actual song with a normal structure, but rather use it as one more element we also have and make it a bit more human through that. And um, also, yeah, do experimental stuff with the voice. So it was important that the vocalists are not really thinking only about they have to transport something which sounds maybe beautiful. It was more about trying to do something crazy with the voice. So we only choose chose people where we thought we could do that with them. And how it does like in the tracks? What's the difference between the tracks instrumental or plus vocal instrument? How is the difference about plays or fans or what? What are the the, the, the favorite ones? Is it a big difference or the instrumentals and vocal are like pretty much the same because of the approach that you just told me about the vocals? You, you mean the reaction from other people? Exactly. Ah, okay. Well, that's hard to tell, actually. I mean, because most of the time we didn't perform with the vocalists. I mean, we performed a uh, few times with Jamie Liddell and then a couple of times with someone else also. Anyway, and um, uh, they are, uh, it was pretty cool, of course, because if you have vocalists on stage, it's a different feeling. You only have somebody who's actually addressing the people, and it's a great vibe, definitely. But as we didn't tour with the vocalists the whole time, we can't really say it. And we never, uh, I mean, the reactions to the tracks, we can't tell, you know, because we don't play them as a DJ, so we don't know. And if we play the tracks live ourselves, we don't have the vocals. So the only track we play live with vocals is actually uh, a track called um, uh, uh, Fantasy Mädchen. And um, it's uh, with Gudrun Gut, and there we sample her voice and we actually use it live. But in, in all the other songs, we never sampled because the other songs, people were singing longer notes and stuff, and it's pretty shitty to sample it, and that's just one sentence, so it was cool to sample it. This uh, mic is really ele electrostatic. Uh, yeah, but now we are working on an album just with one singer, because I think we really wanted, uh, on our last album we had six different singers, and we wanted, to have, wanted them to be as different from each other as possible. I think they're also from six different countries, and um, wanted to try many colors because it, for us it was still quite new to work with vocalists and um, now we are making an album just with one singer he's called Beaver Shepard and he's from Montreal and so far we've performed with him I think three times and they are actually because he's also a very direct person or he builds he can build a lot of um, connection with the public that actually these gigs felt quite different I think even compared to all the other vocalists we work with, he's like where you suddenly feel like you're in a rock band and you have that uh, guy going crazy. So there you can maybe see in the first rows or so that some people are like really into this interaction thing with the singer, which usually maybe of course there's people dancing going crazy in the rows if we are good uh, in the first rows, but. Um, still that added to it and um, I think we liked it and we're gonna to uh, do a, after that album tour with him so then we can also tell you more. Hello, um, when you are um, playing this live or recording this live uh, drum kits are you rooting it into Ableton and processing with the effects or is it just your FOH mixer? with the tricycles who's mixing this. Yeah, usually we do everything in the hardware and, and on the inside this mixer and just record the channels. 
and um, usually we then try to record the dry signal and the wet signal on different tracks and then you can even mess around with that later on but of course we as well use the, all the effects in, in the Ableton channels but this is a after recording process so even before re recording we actually never only record this what comes out of, of one thing we always add some effects or some you know distortion or stuff like this make it just different War die Frage jetzt wegen Live spielen? Live? This was about in, us in the studio. Us playing live? The question was about um, when you are playing live and yes. If uh, the drum set goes into the. If the drum set goes first into Ableton or directly into. We don't the, use, use Ableton at all when we play live. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's actually important to say for us. It's a bit the contrary. Many people produce with um, produce or mem I mean, Ableton is really famous for as a live performance program. But we never used it for that. We use it for recording and we, because we like this clip function and so on. But um, that live, when we play live, there's no sync. The setup is Daniel on the drums together with these Nord drums and. Um, Young on a, so far it was Nord Wave, Nord Jog. Now we're using Nord Lead, <laughs> and um, and uh, some more effects and a Moog um, Moog Mini Tower. And I use two Cork Electribes. That's some sequencers filled with samples we recorded, so sounds or little phrases of our own recordings. So it's not no preset sounds, and so it builds on some pre-programmed patterns, but which are simple. Ah, five minutes, <laughs> uh, which are simple, um, simple enough for me to have the control on any element and be able to play and manipulate everything. So it feels like making the music, which is always an issue when it comes to electronic live performing. And from my, so we've gone or I've gone with Electra as far as I could to still make it sound like something. Uh, and from the Electribe I sent some MIDI stuff into the uh, Moog Mini Tower, which is, I think it's one of my favorite instruments, just this tiny little box from Moog without a keyboard. You need to send MIDI in it, and yeah, what you can do with those uh, filters is uh, just amazing. So we also use that live, and that also goes on a separate channel, of course, but we have, don't, and uh, the Electribe sends a click into Daniel's ear for the drums, Actually, not on all songs, but for some songs it's necessary because when there's a click, you can I can become much more loose. So even if uh, the beat is not audible at all, you can't guess where is the main point of the bar. Then he still can know can know it, and we can jam like that. Uh, but there's no sync between whatsoever, except that he gets a click. Any other questions? Okay, then thank you guys.